Hey guys, well, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So today's video is going to be my 2019 Christian fiction favorites. I just recorded my 2019 biblical fiction favorites, so if you haven't seen that, click the eye on the screen. But I wanted to record these videos on the same day since I had all my books out before I fixed my bookshelf up. Y'all know how that go. But um, we're going to run through them. I don't have that many. I think I have two, four, six, seven books here that are um, Christian fiction. So meaning they're not biblical fiction. They're historical, um, suspense, contemporary fantasy um, books that have like wowed me this year. Like literally wowed me. So I'm going to start off with the one contemporary romance that I actually loved. For this year and that is going to be you belong with me by terry ferris um this is book one in the restoration hearts sorry the restoring heritage um series and this was phenomenal it really just talks about um you understanding that you have to let go and that god is in control of your life it doesn't matter what your plans are it doesn't matter how you um schedule things it doesn't matter your circumstances and what you think you're going through and how big you think it is the uh ruler of your life is God. The author of your life is God. So it was really about that. And this one switched uh, different perspectives. So there was multiple POVs in this book and I really, really enjoyed the way it was written. Um, and it made things more real. A lot of the times when you read biblical fiction, um, you're looking at it from the perspective of these people from back in those times and those eras. But this one really brought it to life in what it possibly could be like now for certain people and i loved um there was one guy in this book i can't remember his name for the life of me and i'm actually gonna look up his name right now because um he i, I can't remember I'm, i can't honestly remember his name i'll leave my review down below and if i can find his name it'll be on the screen but he was such an influential character in this book because he basically was like bringing the community back to god telling people like go to church and come to this service and hear about this and i thought it was phenomenal that he did that um so i'm definitely looking forward to reading the sequel to this um book two because this was epic and the romance i love the romance so much in this book it was so stinking cute i don't really remember their names her name was hannah and luke oh my god hannah and luke were so cute so stinking cute and luke was adopted as a child so he felt like no one could truly love him and he didn't feel like he fit in anywhere um whereas hannah was dealing with some situation um her mother did something back in in the day with the community and the money so she felt like she didn't want to live up to her mother's um to what her she didn't want to be like her mother basically and it's kind of one of those situations when you want when you don't want to be like someone that you try so hard not to be like someone but you make many mistakes along the way so just seeing them to deal with their own personal issues and them both liking each other but luke doesn't believe that hannah could ever love him and then hannah thinks that luke doesn't like her it was just it was a cat and mouse game and on top of the whole faith dynamic i superb superb contemporary romance i highly highly recommend this it was a beautiful five star read all the way following that we're gonna get into some fantasy so y'all know how i feel about my christian fantasy and i don't even i don't have to mention this author okay but we're gonna do it anyway morgan l bussy flight of the raven oh my word book two in the ravenwood saga we got more of lady celine we got more of grand lord damien and oh did things take a turn first of all the romance in this y'all see them pink tabs the romance was like up there for me like on point and um i cried with uh amara and celine there was some there was a scene that took place and it gutted me to the core um some things were revealed about ophiliana who is um celine's baby sister and i was just thrown this book does such a great job of putting fantasy with biblical um you get to see obviously god and the devil but in this book, they're referred to as the light and the dark lady. And you also have this girl, Celine, who is trying to understand her abilities, trying to understand where she fits in, trying to understand how the light, who is God, could use her in her coming to the um, understanding of who she is as a daughter of the light. And it was beautiful. I'm a fantasy lover. I love fantasy movies. I love magical powers. This was epic. Epic, epic, epic. And I will be mentioning the third book towards the end as an honorable mention but great i if you're looking for christian fantasy many people say ted decker but i would definitely say go with morgan l bussey's ravenwood saga 
beautifully written and um it's not hard for you to understand and she definitely does use utilize scripture so beautiful beautiful all the way that's it okay so following that we have another christian fantasy and that's going to be sojourner by jonathan boygett this is book three and the tales of Fay waven and oh my gosh um i had a love-hate relationship with this book at first because of the timeline in this book because it, it follows some of the same characters but in book two there was a situation that occurred where one of the characters had a daughter and something happened with the daughter but then this book skips ahead to a whole different timeline when the daughter's older it it was so weird it, it took me a minute to get into the groove of this but i love this entire series just in general the fourth and final book don king i believe comes out in 2020 so i'm so stoked for that but this was beautifully written magic systems love it i loved the fate aspect i love fairies we just i love fairies okay so to see a christian fantasy written about fairies but you also get to see um there's a character in here I can't pronounce his name for the life of me, so it'll be on the screen. But um, it looks like Emmanuel, and he reminds me of Jesus Christ. Like, no lie. So, perfect. Perfect read. Definitely recommend it. I would say start off with Dawn Singer, which is book one, because this is clearly book three. But The Tales of Fae Raven altogether is a great Christian fantasy. I love the world. I love the characters. I love the creatures that are created. The Wingo Beast um, and the little Pegasus-looking things. They're, they're great. Read it. Next, we're going to go into suspense. So I have a romantic suspense, which actually wowed me. I think I gave this book four stars. Um, and the reason why I'm mentioning it is because I don't normally give suspense novels four stars. They normally get three stars or three and a half. This one wowed the mess out of me so much that I need to get my hands on the first book. And that's going to be Deadly Deceit by Natalie Walters. This is book two in the Harvard Secrets. Um, book one is called Living Lies. And book three is called Silent Shadows or something like that. Yo, this was wow i i went into this not expecting a lot honestly that that's how i go into romantic um not romantic but that's how i go into suspense novels i don't really go into suspense novels expecting much especially from christian suspense i mean regular suspense doesn't really do much so christian suspense i'm just trying to figure out how they're gonna throw the aspect of faith in god but this one did such a phenomenal job i'm not even gonna pretend like i remember the girl's name because i don't so i'm gonna look at the back um her name is vivian vivian and Dep deputy ryan are such a funny couple i enjoy them um i didn't tab up the book honestly i didn't even annotate in this book either so i'm definitely gonna have to reread this but um i did enjoy this a lot um i love the fact that vivian had to figure out a murder um and that she had to work with deputy ryan and that you could see the two of them have feelings for each other but they just fought them off and seeing them come together and everything was just beautifully beautifully done beautifully written I enjoyed this book so much. Um, definitely want to reread it and annotate because I clearly, I went into this just I didn't care about annotating honestly because like I said I didn't have high hopes. I'm not gonna lie, no high hopes for this at all. But um, finding out what really happened, um, and finding out who the watcher, who no not what not no that's not his name. Yeah, watcher. Yeah. Okay. So his name was the watcher. So finding out who the watcher was blew my mind unexpected and it just lets you know that you need to be mindful of the people who surround you because the people you least expect those quiet people be the ones out here murdering people just saying um so i did enjoy this a lot definitely will be reading the first book because i believe deputy ryan is also in the first book and they that's how they first meet so definitely want to read this again and read the first book over okay and the next book i have is suspense they classify it as suspense i classify it as like sci-fi with a little bit of fantasy I don't know it's weird but they classify it as suspense and that's going to be the girl behind the red robe by ted decker and his daughter rochelle decker and oh my god i gave this book five stars okay this was freaking fantastic so it takes place in this sort of post-apocalyptic world where you have this religious community that believes that if you cross the red rope that you're going to be eaten by furies or something like that however everything is not as it seems and i freaking love the faith aspects in this book okay so this book i did do spray edges on if you haven't seen that video just click the eye on the screen i go through how i do um dye sprayed edges by painting them with acrylic paint so this was one of the books i did um and i just think it looks nice with the black font on the spine and then the black edges this book is one of those books that i read for review um and i didn't really annotate as much I have some pages where I marked in orange. I can't find a page right now. But um, I only have three tabs because these were quotes that I really wanted to remember for my review. You guys can see. But this book, oh my god. So it follows a young girl. Her name is, oh Jesus, what is her name? 
Grace. Her name is Grace, and her brother's name is Jamie, if I'm not mistaken. But um, they live in this religious community run by this woman named Rose. And Rose apparently hears from an angel called Silas. And this angel wears all white. Okay, keep in mind. White. This is a man named Silas that wears white. Don't that sound like the devil? All right. Um, and then you have this thing where they call fury so if you cross the red rope and go too deep into the forest you basically can die from the furies and the darkness and all this other stuff however things are not as it seems because jamie decides to go past the red rope and he does and he survives multiple times so they kick jamie out of the community as well as grace and they go to um see what's beyond the red rope and when they go they get attacked by furies but along the way jamie meets bobby and oh my god first of all when i heard bobby i started thinking supernatural because bobby from supernatural yes i'm a christian and i watch supernatural okay moving on um but i thought it was amazing and then you have another character named eli who reminds me of jesus because of the things that he was saying and it, it's hard to explain which is why i'm going to reread this book and do a, a, a reading vlog for this book because it was epic i'm just gonna say it deals with the post-apocalyptic world a double man named silas who pretends to be sort of a god but he's not a god and it's good versus bad and dark versus ugh, it's beautifully written that's all i can say i highly recommend this book it, it was everything and more i love the faith aspects i love little eli eli like i said was this little boy that reminded me of jesus christ like literally he was jesus christ as a baby and he understood um, that he was meant to die. He understood that he was there to save the world from Silas. And it was epic. Totally loved this book. Definitely will be rereading this. This was my first Ted Decker book. So um, we got to get on to Ted Decker some more. So epic. The last two books are going to be historical fiction. So the first one is going to be The Warrior Maiden by Melanie Dickerson. I have read two Melanie Dickerson books this year. I read The Warrior Maiden, which is book nine in her hagenheim series this is a retelling of um mulan and then i also read oh my gosh what is the other one the piper's pursuit which is a retelling of the pied piper which is book 10 in the hagenheim but of those two that i read i really enjoyed this first of all it's a retelling of mulan yes and mulan was bad behind in this this was about mulan becoming a um sort of knight warrior and defending her people and it was epic and i love wolfgang and the romance was so cute um i read this but again i didn't annotate as i read like i made markings of like prayers and scriptures but i wasn't going into this with the mindset to annotate i'm trying to see if i have any other annotations like i marked things in here but i didn't go into this with the mindset of um annotating so oh here's another one that i marked referring to scripture in purple but um i'm definitely going to reread this but my goal for 2020 is to read the entire hagenheim series from melody dickerson so i'm going to be starting from book one because book 11 will be coming out soon um and i think that one is called the peasant stream or something like that that's book 11 so i definitely want to read as many of her books next year hopefully i can get an arc of that one as well um but i really enjoyed it so much i enjoyed the piper's pursuit i gave that a four star i think um, and that one follows Stefan, who is the brother of Wolfgang. And Stefan does get mentioned in this book, which I hated Stefan in this book, but he had a redemption story in The Piper's Pursuit. But Wolfgang and Mulan, I loved it. This takes place in, oh my god, it doesn't say what time period. Um, oh, here we go. Here's a time period. So it takes place in 1423, and it's sort of, a, I don't know if it's, a european type of location i don't like i don't know if these are real places or not i'm not gonna pretend like i do because i don't know i i don't but um yeah it's fairy tale romance series so she reimagines a lot of fairy tales she does medieval ones she does um ya fairy tales i know she has beauty and the beast one she has rapunzel she has a lot of different ones so I'm definitely going to restart. The first one in the series is called The Healer's Apprentice, which I will be hopefully reading in 2020, of Jan January of 2020. But um, we have that. The last book I'm going to mention um, in this top for 2019 is actually another historical fiction, and that's going to be The Spice King by Elizabeth Camden. I actually read this book with my sis Stephanie over at Quilting Beauty in Books. And this book, oh, did I give it five stars? I don't remember if I gave it 4.5 or 5 stars, but I wanted to mention this because this was epic. I loved it so much. The romance was super cute. So it follows a girl named Annabelle, and um, she works for the Smithsonian, and she has to sort of get this, like, extinct orchid from a guy named 
Grey Delacroix, right? Grey Delacroix, yeah. And it's just their romance, and I love the romance in this book so much. Grey is very much up front, plays no games. He likes, he's like, I like you, I'm attracted to you, I want to get to know you more. Like, he's so truthful and upfront. And some things take place that kind of sort of like demolishes the little relationship between them, and it guts me. It guts me, but I love that they um, work through it and they get back together and it's just beautiful. It's beautiful. I don't think I annotated this book either because I was just like, I want to read it. Oh, I did. See, like, I marked it up in certain places, but I didn't, again, put sticky tabs in it because I also had to read this for review. <laughs> That's what happened. See, th this is how I normally read. I read it quickly and mark here and there instead of getting to thoroughly enjoy it. So I definitely will be reading this book too. It does come out next year, which follows the sister of um gray who is caroline i think that's her name caroline but she pisses me off oh my god caroline pisses me off she pissed me off this entire book like his sister was a bit of a douchebag i got it i understood because i'm kind of like that with my brother concerning relationships but she was a little extra and a little petty sorry about the fingers and the hands I, I, she just makes me emotional so we have this okay so my honorable mention is one that comes out in 2020 it comes out february 4th 2020 i got an art copy i loved it five stars all the way and i'm so sad because it's over like <sighs> it's going to be the third and final book in the ravenwood saga and that is going to be cry of the raven first of all this cover is everything to me everything but book three just i'm not counting it because it's not a 2019 release and because I want to include it in my 2020 favorites when I get the physical copy. So that's why I'm not really counting it, which is why it's an honorable mention. But just know I loved it. And I have a reading vlog coming out for it on the release. Well, the Thursday of the release. So my reading vlog will be on February 6th. The release is February 4th. But Grand Lady Celine and Grand Lord Damien are phenomenal. The romance was epic. The relationships and the bonding was epic. Seeing all of the great houses come together was epic. That war scene, that battleground, oh my god, it killed me. Um, one of my favorite characters died. I wasn't ready for it. Like it was, it was kind of like you know somebody got to die, but you you don't think it' gonna be like that person that you think is essential to the story that dies gutted me um i'm sad that the trilogy will be over once this book is released i'm sort of kind of in denial that it's over because i need a fourth book and let me just say i think his name is raven ribbon i don't know but oh i if i could get a fourth book featuring him a little older i would be happy in life you know but we're just gonna leave it there um her mama her mother what is her mother's name i can't her mother pisses me off. I'm looking through this thing right now to find her mother's name. Um, Lady Ragna. Lady Ragna is annoying. I loved, I loved Caiaphas. Ca Caiaphas is such an amazing father. Like, such an amazing father in this book. I love him so much. But Lady Ragna was so petty. But I felt sort of bad. Like, this book made me feel bad for her. Like, I felt my heart, like, kind of cracked for her. But, um, honorable mention nonetheless. But, those are my top picks for 2019 my favorite christian fiction reads that i read um i read a good mix i have some historical fiction so some some suspense um contemporary romance i definitely plan to look into some more contemporary romance that's a lot more hard hitting like um this one was which is what's this book you belong with me by terry paris because it it gripped me from it, it gripped my heart you guys can see the tags like you see the tabs. A lot more tabs toward the end with the green. Um, but there was a lot of inspirational quotes going on. Like, it, it was phenomenal. And I loved watching the characters grow. So, that is it for my picks. If you guys have read anything outside of biblical fiction, let me know down below any Christian fictions. If you have any Ted Decker recommendations. I know I'm going to be starting the um, Before They Were Left Behind the, sorry, the Left Behind series. I'm going to be starting that in January. I want to try to binge read the entire series for 2020 because a lot of people have recommended it to me. But if you have any other Christian fiction books for me to read, whether it be fantasy, sci-fi, um, romance, um, historical, let me know. I'm looking to get into more genres and it's kind of hard for me to get into those books that are outside like in the secular i don't like secular historical fiction like it just does nothing for me but for some reason christian historical fiction is actually quite interesting thrillers and suspense don't do much for me but christian suspense 
I don't know. So let me know if you have any recommendations. Leave them down below. I'm always looking for books to add to my list. Like, we have a big TBR, so why not make it bigger? <laughs> but um, I think that is it for now. I will have in 2020, hopefully in January, I will have a walkthrough of um, my bookshelves. I think I did one on this channel. Can't remember, but I think I did one. But I'm going to do an updated one. And I'm going to walk with you guys through all the books that I own that are Christian fiction. And then I'm also going to show you my other show. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do my Christian nonfiction because I have way too many of those. We have way too many of those, but we'll see. I'll probably get to it in 2020, just not in January. But um, that is it for now. If you guys are not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. And if you are subscribed, click the bell to stay notified. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.